I learned that from the very beginning when, you know, we talked and everything that you cannot push anybody into that healing journey. Because I remember the day Walker, when we had our first session, I said to you, well, you know, what can I do to heal my dad? What can I do to, you know, help him? Heal yourself. And, <laughs> and you said, there's no way you could do that, Shelly. You cannot. He has to be, feel it within himself. You know, he has to give up that control. He has to be authentic and want to do it. You know, but I wanted to keep that control of, okay, this is my role. This is what I need to do as his daughter to help him. It was almost like I was trying to be his caretaker, you know, and, and vicariously heal yeah. through, through what you could do for him. If you could heal him, then maybe you could heal yourself and right. all of those issues and programming that came in. But what did I say? I said, no, the, no. the best opportunity that you'd have for him to ever seek anything out is by you being the leader in your own self healing. Yeah. People will, people will, they'll sit up and, and, and look at you though. What are you doing? What's differently? What's happening? Yeah. And he, he saw that difference in me. I think, I think it took a couple of months to just really see it, which is nothing. A couple of months is nothing to change your tune, you know, compared how long we've been on the ceiling journey. It really is not, you know, <laughs> shadow work I mean, we had talked that face. wall was way up. So I would really tell, you know, those listeners out there that it's so important. If you're going to come to Walker, you're going to come to Motherella, you come with that open heart, you come with that willingness to heal you come with the ability to be very humble and look at your own, you know, past traumas and really dive deep, you know, otherwise I, I feel like it's just not that useful. I mean, would you agree in that sense or? Absolutely. Do you know how many yeah, individuals I mean, have come and said, Oh, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a quantum soul retrieval. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, nope. I refunded them back. Cause I said, they're not ready. She green lights. When someone comes for a reading like you had, you had your green light mm -hmm. and people go, you know, well, that's not a good way to run a business. This is how I am in authenticity. This is how I'm in energetic authenticity because there is no point in me doing a quantum soul retrieval with someone that feels that they're a victim. A soul retrieval does right. not work energetically with anyone that isn't connected to self. Yep. yep. It won't work. Uh, they can try it, but it won't work. And so for those out there that aren't sure if they're connected with self, do a reading with Motherella. Figure out what little pieces and things are, are you know, in those blind spots, so to speak, that, that one's not seeing that's actually moving them further away from. They're mm -hmm. counting on someone else to, to you know, run their life or their life. dictate how their life should be governed. And it just can't be that way. It know? can't. But there's, there's no, no matter freedom how in sick security. They are, really. No, no. You know? No, and I mean... I, I was the biggest proponent of this as being an empath. And like I said, going through all, you know, the, the, the trenches, so to speak, all my life, the school of hard knocks, like I like to call it. I wore my trauma like a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. No one could help me because I was so damaged. No one could take mm -hmm. care of me because I was so damaged. It wasn't until I finally got to a place that said, I am continually creating a reality where no one can help me and I will not receive help, which is like what people call negative ego as pride. I was, mm -hmm. I wanted to do it all on my own, but I wouldn't actually accept any assistance for me to for actually you. be deserving for something. Oh, I am deserving of life. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and the other thing I found based on my personal experience, I'm not going to get too much into it. I know you guys know my history and everything, but, um, you know, PTSD, is huge. And a lot of people think that PTSD is really just people who have been in combat and in war, but that is just not the case. And so I think it's really important for people to understand that because I, I really truly believe I wasn't diagnosed with PTSD, but I went through my own version of it for several years based on the trauma of, you know, what happened to me as an adult after I got married, as well as, you know, as a child. So I, I think, you know, I had that revelation and understanding that that healing needed to take place because, you know, the second that, you know, my marriage reformed and we got back together, I thought, oh, I'm healed. I'm good to go, you know? <laughs> And, mm -hmm. you know, those traumas, people have to remember, they come out in various ways, 
they come out in, you know, your relationships and the way you react to certain situations. And, you know, I was living in this fight versus flight mentality for four or five years, you know, and it, it's just, if you have that self-awareness, you can really stop that and you can change your own life. And, you know, so that's really, I think, important to understand because even I thought PTSD was more, you know, people who are just in combat and recovering from the trauma of being in war. I think, think that's beautiful because it's much bigger than just that because trauma starts upon vesseled into this place we call every the dome. Everyone has trauma. Every infant vesseled in from a female because it's the only way a, fem- a, a baby can be born, mm-hmm. whether it's through a C-section, which is very traumatic, or whether it's through a harsh vaginal delivery, which is very traumatic. Mm-hmm. Upon birth, trauma starts. So PTSD, technically, if you look at the true meaning of PTSD, starts upon birth. Um, because like I said, you're whisked away, you're manipulated, and then you're injected. So the trauma begins right upon first breath. Mm-hmm. And you are detached from your mother, from everything that you get. Yep, the cords cut, you know, and, you know, in ancient civilizations, they knew when the mother gave birth, it was a family member that was the first to touch a baby, not a stranger, because it leaves an energetic footprint, genealogical energetic mm-hmm. footprint. And then the next one to touch it would be the mother, unless the mother was giving birth on her own somewhere. If there wasn't a family member, it had to be a higher elder. Mm-hmm. But it was never it was never in the space of all these hands. Or treated like a disease. Treated we like treat a dis- pregnancy disease. Like, like a disease that's been around since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. But look Seriously. how many people look. have left a imprint from their fingertips because there is genetic material in the fingertips that leave this energetic residue. You have a nurse, you have a doctor, you have all these people touching the baby. The first thing that the genetic connection between the the mother's fingerprints and the child's body, it needs to have that energetic connection in order to feel that actual, oh, where I came from, what I am a part, I am a part of. It's immediately separated from them. Mm -hmm. Separate them right upon pregnancy. Right upon pregnancy. Stick them right into this condition that Mm -hmm. pregnancy is a disease. So you need to go in and have your prenatal care and you got to have an ultrasound. I, I mean, then you need blood work and then you have to check your RH factor. And that, I mean- it is insane to watch from the minute you, you find out you're pregnant, you're yeah. already disconnected because you're already thinking, can I have this baby? Am I going to be in a disease? A lot of times you're assuming the worst. You know? and, then, and then people completely. wonder why postpartum depression is so prevalent. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. It's completely unnatural in yeah. every capacity. I mean, I, I was torn apart. I almost died after our third child post-delivery yeah. one year, one week post-delivery Unbelievable. You know? wow. i went into sepsis and oh yeah septic you know, shock, yeah yep yep and oh well we're God glad you're there oh thank yes. you yes <laughs> you're so, a, best, making a you're, huge you're difference for a bigger purpose so we mm-hmm. are very glad you made it through that trauma 